We saw a recent example of this, with this man, this is a comedian, Louis C.K. He normally does HBO specials and other things like that, which you have to be a subscriber to HBO or pay-per-view, and, and he gets paid by them to put on the specials. Well, he decided not to do that. He decided to put an hour-long new special, make it all himself, put it on the internet, <laughs> ask for a five, $5, down, $5 thing to download it, and download it just like saying DRM-free. Anyone could share it, view it, do whatever he wants with it. He didn't make play it into a game, but he said, look, if I don't cover my costs um, out of all of this, you know, may, you know it does not, doesn't, if this doesn't work better than HBO <laughs> it does for me, I'm not going to do this again. So please pay. And I said, he said, please pay. It'd be nice of you to pay. And he was knew pretty much what he was asking for people to be nice, and he didn't sing... I don't think he necessarily be people would necessarily be nice. Anyway, nonetheless, they did. Um, and I don't, we don't know which proportion of people paid. Um, we don't know what sort of sharing there was around uh, in the place. But we do know he ended up making four times his costs. He ended up donating half of his profits to charity, paying all of his crew who did it uh, more and bonuses and all that sort of stuff, and ended up doing this again. And now he's doing this for other artists as well. Okay? So it turns out you know, these sorts of things can work enough. In other words, you can get enough people to agree to pay that it works. And now we have this platform, Kickstarter, which is designed to do the same thing. Kickstarter gets right what Stephen King gets wrong, got wrong. Kickstarter works like this. If you want to produce, a, say, a video game that might appeal to some segment and you don't really know who, okay, you go to Kickstarter and say, I need... $25,000 to develop this game uh, if people would just contribute. <laughs> okay? uh, usually the contribution is, is, is for different levels. You get things like as if the game is produced, you get the game or you get some other things associated with it. Different levels of contribution. And, um, but also, Kickstarter puts front and center how close you are to the goal and all over you don't have to pay unless they actually reach the goal. Now, that doesn't mean you'd actually get delivered the game, but at least you know that enough people have... You don't, you're not paying when no one else didn't want to contribute. If there's enough there, it'll, it'll work. Okay? So he sort of, this, this platform corrects what Stephen King kind of got wrong and has been quite successful. But what's really interesting about it is that the projects that get funded... There's a distribution of contributions. Some people are, uh, are contributing, yes, I'd like to receive this game if it works out, but some people are contributing 10 times more because they want to push it through even more. So you're getting some of those differential prices being paid. All of this is related to a concept in public economics, in public good economics, sort of by a Swede, Eric Lindahl, almost a century ago, in terms of how you would price public goods. Because essentially, the creation of content involves a large fixed cost and very few ongoing costs, which has a characteristic very similar to public goods. It's much the same way as if you want to defend a country. Okay, you have to incur a lot of uh, ongoing costs that are collectively shared. Lindahl pricing is a way of sharing it. And what these other mechanisms are designed to do is to sort of feel their way towards that. Because it always involves different people paying different amounts to make it work.